Okay, hello. Um, yeah, my name is Thomas. I'm from Fraunhofer Institute in Dortmund, Germany. And uh, together with my colleagues, uh, I think you see them over there, Jana and uh, Ben, uh, we are working on AR for the last couple of years. And uh, we are trying to optimize processes in intra logistics. Um, so for the next couple of minutes, uh, I want to give you some insights um, on processes in internal logistics and how to um, optimize them with uh, AR. So uh, we've run a case study on, on packaging. Uh, we do different uh, research, uh, research projects uh, like SmartPro, uh, the Innovation Lab for Hybrid Services and Logistics, and the uh, project SafeLog. So, um, um, coming to the case study for AR-assisted packaging, uh, what you can see in the video on the left-hand side is uh, the main task for the, uh, for the package uh, person. Uh, so it, it, he has to um, put items into a box and uh, pick them from a wall. Um, we tested two groups in that case study. One is a con control group, which is uh, using uh, handheld scanners. And the other one is the experimental group, um, which is using AR device, uh, the Meta One. Later on, we compared them and uh, got some numbers out of it. So the con uh, control group using uh, this type of scanner and uh, experimental group, uh, the Meta One. Um, so the outcome of the uh, case study was that uh, the volume usage, so uh, the space left uh, in the box after uh, packaging the, uh, the items is um, less when you use AR, obviously, uh, like 12%. And uh, the time needed for the whole uh, packaging process uh, was uh, lower, uh, 24, 20%, uh, 24 lower uh, than with a, a control group. And uh, the total costs of the whole packaging uh, process uh, was reduced by 34%. Um, coming to the uh, SmartPro research project, uh, which means uh, smart assistance for humans and production systems, uh, we are trying to, um, to give context-based information to all the people working in a warehouse. Um, you can see it uh, in the picture on the left side. Uh, there's the inbound area, uh, a little bit lower. You have the storage area where uh, all the goods are stored. Later on, it will go to the um, picking, uh, picking area where people pick things from, uh, from boxes and put it into the boxes which will be shipped later on. And uh, on the top right corner, you see the uh, you see the outbound area. So in all these areas, you have different people working and uh, different processes and different interaction types, like uh, variables, smartwatches, tablets, smartphones, glasses, and so on. And uh, for each and every area, and for each and every role, like the picker, the packager, or uh, the inbound person, uh, we have to deliver the information. Uh, in an appropriate time on an appropriate uh, way. And uh, this is all done by a platform. We call it the SmartPro platform, which will process all the information which will be gathered in the field to uh, meaningful information for the person at a specific time. Another uh, lab which we are working on uh, for the last couple of months uh, it's the Innovation Lab for Hybrid Systems and Services, um, where, we, um, where we work on AR2, but we try to, um, to connect human workers with technology, uh, not meaning technology only as uh, variables, but also machines and robots. And um, coming out of this project, uh, we uh, developed the packaging scenario further. Uh, you can see that um, the technology we are using here is a HoloLens, so uh, it is much more of an improvement. Uh, we have um, markerless, like we don't use any QR codes or so on. Uh, we use uh, the actual item um, configuration to uh, track the items and show the worker how to put the things into the box. Um, in the next few months, uh, we are trying to uh, find partners 
who will work with us together so we can uh, actually run a test in the field and uh, to get real data, real percentages on how the pro uh, processing speed will uh, increase. Or maybe not, but we hope it does. And uh, the last uh, project I want to introduce to you is SafeLog, uh, which means safe human-robot interaction in logistics applications uh, for highly flexible warehouses. So here you see a warehouse which is um, conventionally automated totally and it has a safe area. So there is no human in, uh, admitted to access this area. But for uh, human-robot collaboration, we need uh, people to go inside and pick things from racks and at the same time have the robots uh, transporting racks from place A to place B. And um, this will be fulfilled by, um, by a safety vest. The person on the left-hand side uh, with the circles around uh, has uh, some uh, sensor modules on the vest and the robots themselves too and uh, they will measure the distance by uh, redundant um, sensors. And once a robot gets close to the person, uh, the robot will slow down, and if it gets much more closer, it will stop. Um, in the uh, upper, upper part, you, you will see the picking scenario again, and on the lower part, on the right side, uh, you see a maintenance scenario, uh, which we already have um, uh, shown in a concept, a proof of concept. So what you see here is uh, we have different ATVs, uh, like autonomous uh, transport vehicles, and on the upper right corner you see the person, like the maintenance person, and uh, he will try to um, try to fix an arrow which the vehicle has shown. Uh, he's wearing a, a HoloLens, and the HoloLens will show instructions on what to do, when to do it, and uh, to solve the problem. So it, it shows that the screwdriver has to be placed in four different positions. Uh, then the person has to open the lid. So you see the arrow which will uh, guide him to the lid. He will open it and later on uh, disconnect the cables. So this video is taken um, in our um, in our laboratory, which is about like uh, 1,000 square meters, where we have kind of real conditions, but not uh, we're not in a, in a real field. So by the use of uh, different types of uh, UI elements like text, um, pictures, and uh, 3D models, uh, we can assist uh, the person how to uh, fix a problem in an AGV. Okay, so he's measuring the voltage, it's at 26.6, uh, and if a uh, voltage is higher than 24, uh, he's supposed to call the service, because uh, there seems to be another problem than the battery. Okay. And at this point, I want to thank you for, uh, for your attention, and I'm open for questions now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thomas. I think yes. you've already got a question there. Yes. OK. Um, how do you make the content uh, input of HoloLens uh, specific challenges to face and overcome? Mm. Actually, uh, this is kind of a, a proof of concept. Uh, we don't have an automated system uh, right now, but uh, it's, it's kind of a big work. You have to get all the things together. You have to um, create all the models, and it takes some time. But uh, once you have done that, you can, uh, you can reuse it again. And uh, the next question, um, how do you align the virtual and physical models uh, with HoloLens? Um, what we've done there was uh, we, um, we scanned the, uh, the object and got the features of the object and took it as a reference um, for the HoloLens and matched it with the real environment later. Thomas, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.